Um, when I think of Africa, I think about an underdeveloped country with a lot of poverty and illness and diseases. The Lion King. I think of the colors of the flag and I think of homeland always. <clears throat> and I kind of sort of think of nature sometimes, but this is what comes to mind. Black people. <laughs> Starving children. Most of us who are Americans know little about Africa. We might have studied Africa for a few weeks in school or glanced occasionally at a newspaper headline about a genocide, AIDS, malaria, or civil war, but rarely have we actually thought seriously about Africa. While many people do know that humans descended from Africa, many still believe Americans and Africans are significantly different. In an ideal world, we would abandon our stereotypes about Africa and learn to deal with Africans as they really are. Instead of looking at a certain country and a certain people a certain way, we should gain knowledge and understanding about something we have only been taught to assume the worst of. I think human beings originated... Um, well, obviously, when you think about the first human beings and their location, I think about the supercontinent of Pangaea. But I think that originally human beings came from somewhere in the Euro-Asia area or African um, or Africa. I think that human beings, multiple civil civilizations arose simultaneously, but some of the first civilizations were in Africa. Like Northwestern Africa. Um, from what I hear, I believe it's Egypt. And it just just comes from like myths, but that's just my guess. Humans originated from Adam and Eve. Um, well, from what I've been told, I like originated in Africa or something, <coughs> and then like people who like moved into different countries and stuff. That's what I've heard, but I don't know. Although there are many different views as to where humans originated, there is heavily supported evidence that humans did originate in Africa. We began our story in Africa according to many accredited scientists and paleoanthropologists. Our closest related ancestor to Homo sapiens, Lucy, was also discovered in Africa, and these statements are mentioned throughout Keem, Shillington, and Oppenheimer's work. We can confirm the scientific claims about where the Homo sapiens originated through fossil evidence. In Curtis Keem's Mistaking Africa, he discusses evolution, saying, Change occurs along a line that stretches from the simplest living forms to the most complex. As each successful species evolves, a new and higher rung is added to the evolutionary ladder. In History of Africa by Kevin Shillington, Shillington says, The evolution of the fully modern human begins to appear in the savannah woodlands of southern and eastern Africa. We study Africa because the first civilizations arise from Africa and how they affected the later Greek and Roman civilizations, which are often termed as the ancestors of the Western civilizations. Before the ancient civilization of Egypt was united, there was a way to record the weather and also to tax the peasants. The Egyptians developed the first 12-month calendar that had 365 days using their knowledge in astronomy and math, according to Shellington. Agriculture is a vital factor in many civilizations. The pillars of the ancient civilization of Egypt were built on agriculture. After the evidence is shown about ancient Egypt, we can infer that Egypt came before ancient Greek and completely from Africa. The people that came and settled the Nile eventually became the ancestors of the people of ancient Egypt. This acts as evidence to show that the people of Egypt were black. Just think about slave trades. I would probably have to say okay. animal skins um, and bones and different kinds of food probably trade in. Yeah. I know gold, gold and the mining were two of the most like important minerals of uh, Egypt, but food, I don't know. Like, you give me food, I'll do your job for you. <laughs> All I know of is like diamonds and stuff like that, if I'm correct. Um, but I don't know about anything else. Africa plays a large role in trade among the world because this is where the concept of trade began and expanded. Without trade, many pre-colonial and now developed states in Africa would not have thrived. 
for example, Mapungubwe and Zimbabwe, which both use trade as a main social process information. Trade started in 2000 BCE when Berbers populated northern Africa. The camel and expansions of trans-Saharan trade began with this group of indigenous travelers. The camel was one of the earliest types of trade and revolutionized trade across the desert, while South Africa serves as a source of raw materials, the market for manufactured products, the outlet for export of capital, and the reserve for cheap labor for the developed countries. South African economic and trade policy has not only socio-political and economic opponents, rivals or competitors in front of it, but also a national home behind it. Trade is in high demand and obviously an important factor for not only developing but also developed nations. Music